been a while since we've been in the lab. <laughs> uh. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Now, we've been known from time to time to share our opinion on something that we like or don't like, and honestly, thanks for watching today. Thanks for tuning into EE for everyone. I think today is going to be a really fun video. Be something a little different, which will be right along with the theme of something different. We are probably super out of focus. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully that does okay. Um, at any rate, uh, welcome back to the lab, welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we've got something really exciting and I can't wait to get back into the swing of things and get some content rolling. We've got a lot of really fun projects coming up. Uh, microphone screwed up. Uh, okay, hopefully that's good. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. All right, test, test, one, two. How did, hello, okay. How is one so much bigger than 0 0.96? Okay. <laughs> oh, have I mentioned it's been a while? <laughs> We've been making some changes, so hopefully this project looks a little bit different, smells a little different, tastes a little different, perhaps I'll even say better than what we are used to. I'm really excited for the new face of EE for everyone, and I hope that you are too. It has really been a fun couple of months as we've been dreaming up some of these changes. So let us know what you think down in the comments. But we have been known to share our opinion with you a few times before. And well, there's something that happened, and this wasn't really a part of our planned release cadence, but I got triggered in a way that hasn't happened in a long time. You guys ever seen something like this? It's TV. And uh, in particular, this is a TV that kind of works. Ah, there we go. Okay, boots up as you would expect. It's a reasonably large, supposed to be a Roku TV, and it's got kind of a problem. Goes into recovery mode, and then you're just kind of in recovery mode forever. And we've gone through, I've restored this thing over the internet, restored it with the USB, and honestly the only thing that I can really, really say about this smart TV, other than that it's frustrating and stupid and I don't love it, is that it really seems like this TV uh, has a memory issue because it'll restore from backup and then it just, yeah, after some amount of time, it's not like user interaction or anything like a corrupt app, it just does this. And you see, it's fine, but honestly, this TV is great. It doesn't have any dead pixels. It's managed to survive for a few years and now it's just e-waste. Like, they just want me to take this, throw it away, and buy a new one because I'm in recovery mode. And, and if I'm honest, I don't really love Roku TVs. I'm, you know, it's not really my favorite. And so I had a thought that might just turn into a project, and that's what we're gonna find out today. We are going to try to figure out what's going on inside of this 42 inch, whatever, 40-ish inch Roku TV, and see if we can turn this smart TV into a dumb TV with a simple adapter board to allow for something like an HDMI input to determine what is shown on screen. Should be pretty simple, should be pretty fun, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can save this thing from going into a dumpster because today's throwaway culture just makes me kind of mad. So let's see where this goes. Okay, uh, one of the first things we're gonna need to do is try to get access to the electronics. It seems like there's this nice plastic cover that we should be able to take off without interfering with anything else. Here's hoping at least. Um, there's a couple of these base amount screws. I think these all need to come out in order to. Yeah, so we'll probably speed this up somehow. Um, But yeah, at um, this point I'm hopeful. Yeah, so anyways, here's kind of my thought. Um, there's a lot of standard features of displays. This will probably be missing. Many of those do that. So at the end of the day, I don't know what internal display interface this thing's gonna use. There are a number of them that are possible. For example, MIPI DSi 
is a display interface. We might run into a roadblock with something like that where it's just an incompatible digital interface. I don't know if that's really a high risk here, but yeah, so this is the TCL43S25. I don't know how much functionality is baked into the main board. Could be the audio amp as well, which would be a little tricky if we need to get the audio and video on board. Okay, it seems that this is a simple converter board. Not a whole lot going on, probably some transient suppression, maybe some filtering, I see some local caps. Seems like it's just a logical interposer because you can see it's mechanically different. So this is some kind of probably a proprietary uh, digital interface coming across these cables here. Um, and then that's just broken out to the larger panel, which is unfortunate because that doesn't tell us anything about it. Uh, it's frustrating. It also means that we can't make any assumptions about what kind of interface is being run on that ribbon cable. It is very likely not a standard interface. But we still have uh, another hope. We can take a look at what is known about this converter board. Um, we might just be stuck with a replacement of that board, which I guess is better than throwing out the whole TV. But... Yeah, I mean, who knows? Looks like a bunch of pretty simple filters and power converters. This almost looks like a four phase um, system there. Perhaps it's two phase with two inductors in parallel. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. Looks like actual magnetics on your Ethernet interface. That's not a guarantee. Yeah, looks fine. And as far as cheap boards for your TV go, and then you got a yeah a digital amp over there. Seems like they might have used the ITX form factor. Not sure about that, but that feels really mini ITXy. Um, yeah, it's too bad. It is very likely that these are LVDS. And if they're LVDS, we should be able to find five differential pairs. I see one, two, three, four, five. No, six isn't the right amount. I see about one, two, see six. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then come over here. Seven might be shared. Interesting. What do we see on the second one? I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah, this might be a mystery. Then all of those differential pairs come down to this chip, whatever's under here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve differential pairs. Ah, uh, it doesn't seem to map to LVDS. Okay, so here's what we learned. This thing is not going to be easy to fix. Yeah, the panel's fine, and apparently that's not enough. This thing is going to be a real bear to reverse engineer 
started digging in AUO is the panel, likely the panel manufacturer. And it looks like they had some hand in developing this whole system. I'm seeing a lot of interface ICs that I can't find data sheets for. I'm seeing a lot of potentially pretty locked down proprietary information. Um, it does not seem like it is going to be easy to uncover, which really sucks. Um, if this were a more standard interface, you know, maybe it is LVDS, one or two banks, maybe even three, four um, banks of LVDS signaling going down to the panel. That might be what this is. Um, but just like there seems to be some amount of differential pair signaling, which would make sense for something like LVDS, it seems like there is just as much, if not more, um, general purpose I.O. communication going down as well. That's indicated to me uh, by two things. One, if you look at these ribbon cables, you can see there's this shielded section, and then there's this unshielded section. That would indicate to me these, this unshielded section is likely not those differential pairs. That is likely just general purpose signaling, and that, that probably does something. You know, it could be enable lines for sections of backlight. If this has local dimming on the backlight, it could be any number of things, but at the end of the day, either replacing the TV or replacing this main board is probably going to make the most sense. Man, TVs have gotten more complicated than a magnet beam steering your electrons here or there, or a magnetic field steering your electrons here and there. Unfortunate, but more to come. Hopefully the answer isn't throw this in a dumpster and buy a new one. Seems like main boards are available for about 50 bucks. Might have the same problem just later. You never know. Uh, and this memory failure is probably something that comes up every now and again. But it'd be nice to breathe some new life into this. So expect to see a part two at some point in the future. And hopefully it's a good one.